I guess all the more reason to be a bit cautious. No, we have to be realistic about this now. And again, I'm not espousing that people go out and do this, except if they want and under the most control of circumstances with people who know what they're doing. But here is someone, an average 25-year-old, an average 18-year-old, an average 15-year-old, and drugs are everywhere now of all kinds. Who well, are not not all kinds. Let's hang on just for a sec before you go on to where you're going. Uh-huh, the uh-huh. problem is is that the drugs that are out there are mm-hmm. the drugs that all this research is showing by all these other people, Dan Russell, Cop vs. CIA, all these guys that are talking about it. The ones that are out there that are available, why is it crack? Why is it cocaine? Why is it heroin? Why is that? Well, that's because those countries where this comes from have this huge military American United States presence and that stuff is brought in by these mafia. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, people. yeah. So the problem is, is that even if people, and suppose you're, you're an 18-year-old young man, and you find out that mushrooms have a lot to do with religion, and you want to go, go find some. Well, let me tell you something. You can find crack, you can find coke, you can find heroin, but I'll be damned if you can find some mushrooms. It's hard, huh? It's very, very hard. Isn't that interesting? Well, they w- <laughs> that's the game, though, again. But let's assume that someone does find. And, you know, I guess we could say that it's possible that kids could find mushrooms. They're, they are around. It's, it's obviously difficult from what you're saying. The best but, way is to really learn about it, and you can go pick them in the natural. Now, okay, and that's what you and others who study this in a scholarly fashion talk about in your books, which are available, of course, at uh, James Arthur's website. Now, my point was... With our young people, and not even so young anymore, so totally created, crafted, and molded by this vapid, empty society of style, they are nothing less and nothing more than the, in many cases, than the agglutination of all the things that they think they ought to be. All of a sudden, this mask is gone, James, and they're looking at their real selves, and as you say, the realization that they are so much more, potentially than they actually are in their normal, conscious, socialized state. Must be overwhelming to some of them. Amazing. All right, we'll be right back with James Arthur in just a couple minutes talking about mushrooms and mankind. Pondering this whole thing, uh, James Arthur, about a young person who may all of a sudden be given the tools chemical, natural, to take a look at him or herself and those certainly around him or herself, that would be that would be shocking. I mean, it really would be. And your point is important, but on the other side of that coin, we have, here is someone, a young person, I don't care, 15, 20, 25, whatever, 30, who all of a sudden realizes, what a scam, how much of my life has been co-opted by this media BS, this crap that they push on us as culture how many years I've spent trying to be cool and how much really of God's universal energy is within me that I have never been able to see or I have been denied access to. That would be shocking, angering, ultimately enlightening, of course, but this, as I say, is a very tricky thing to do and why I urge people to use extreme caution, even though it's a wonderful thing. I I just think our young people now are in such a state of, of abject deprivation in terms of knowing who they really could have been. They only are what they think they ought to be. And it's a, it's a, it's a real dicey thing for some. You hit the nails right on the heads all the way down the line because as you break down the barriers and find out who you really are and you see yourself and your potential, then you do recognize that everything that you've been told is just such a bunch of plastic societal crap. And when that happens... That's what that's what people are afraid of, and that's why they pass the laws against these things. That's why they do not want you to find out what. That's right. Well, that's how they're playing the game. Keep everybody in the dark and keep tomorrow just like today. I remember in in college in the seventies and so forth, a lot of people were taking LSD and were taking mushrooms, and I don't want to draw too many parallels with LSD, but I, I hear much the same from people who took that particular drug under controlled circumstances. But back then, the lie wasn't as grotesque as it is now. In the 60s and 70s, people still had at least a handle on who they might be, I think. Uh, It's gone now. Uh, 
but then what what would you say about the, the parallels between LSD and and the general effect of mushrooms in the proper controlled environment? Well, as far as parallel goes, it's a it's one of those five methoxy uh, ring indole alkaloids that's uh, very similar in structure, uh-huh. and that's one of the reasons why it does what it does. LSD meaning that it's so similar to a uh, so they're, 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 if not brothers, they're certainly first cousins. Yeah, well, it actually comes from uh, a discovery that came from a, a synthesized form of ergot, which is uh, is a horn-shaped fungus that grows on wheat, uh-huh. and which has there's been much written about by by scholars such as Dan Merker, who wrote a book called The Manna of of Heaven, and uh, uh, Manna and the Bible, and he's talking about how ergot was used by these magicic m- magicians and uh, these orders of uh, occultic knowledge back back then, and uh, so we have an ergot parallel, which which is uh, it, it could have been the kaikion also of the uh, of the Eleusian mysteries, and uh, but except for the fact that we have lots of statues of Dionysus who is standing there holding mushrooms, so. Huh. You know, you, you know when the first, and I've seen original, I think it was the New York Times, one of the newspapers had stories about LSD and the original testing of it, and they, they, were, they began experimenting with LSD. I think it was the first officially announced in 1950 or 49. It was right there at the uh, mid-century point, so they've been at it a long time. Yeah, well, it was discovered in the late 30s. Sure, but officially they announced that the, I forget which government agency was doing it, and we have so many other things uh, on the market now. Uh, I, this isn't meant to be a general dissertation on commonly available drugs, but you've got MDMA, known as ecstasy, which is the club drug, which is going mainstream now. I guess that's readily available. But again, this is one of those illegal and potentially harmful drugs that uh, they want out there. Well, the, the thing is about ecstasy is that so many people are going to dance parties, they're going to raves, and they're, they're taking this uh, substance, which is giving them a, a, a similar to the godlike experience. Exactly the place you don't want to be when you have that kind of realization. Well, no, actually, it's, it's quite fine to be around rhythmic drumming and dance. Look at what the ancient tribal people used to do. They would take the substances, and then they would have rhythm and dance. Well, I wish I could concur with you, but I, I, I view most lyrics and the other aspects of pop music uh, as being antithetical to getting back to our roots on the planet. However, I understand your point. Uh, well, the, the point is, is that these, these kids, are, uh, they've, they've become disillusioned with religion, they've become disillusioned with society, and they realize what, what's been happening to them, and it's all a scam, and they go to a dance party with a bunch of people that are all, all standing around, and there's not really any lyrics to it, it's mostly ambient beat music, and they start dancing, mm-hmm. and they have a, a mystical experience. So this is the closest thing that these kids have ever been to God. Well, sad to say, uh, you, yeah. may have, you may have uh, some people agreeing with you out there, and, and who am I to say I haven't been to these places. But nonetheless, there are natural ways to do it, and mushrooms have been around forever. We, of course, do a program with James uh, almost every holiday season where we look at Christmas cards. And, and boy, boy, have I got a... Oh, boy, wait till the show this year. It's going to be so great. When you folks see the images of that beautiful red mushroom this Christmas on Christmas cards, on calendars, on paintings, on goodies, on treats, on presents, you're going to be amazed at the symbolism that is in Christmas, and it all has to do with this gorgeous, beautiful mushroom that is found growing under pine trees. And this is going to bring us right into the discussion of the topic tonight, Jeff, because... When you, when you get those pictures loaded up that I sent you, yeah, they're going up now. Yeah, we're okay. Let's start talking about. This. Well, we'll do that. Let's. We got about uh, four minutes till the break, so let's hold off and and start in the pictures after the top of the hour. If you want to do a, a prelude, do that now. Go right ahead. Sure. The the prelude will be this. We talked a little bit earlier about uh, the pineal gland and what happens in the womb. Well, when when a child is forming in the womb. After conception, at 49 days, which is seven times seven weeks, this is when the pineal gland is fully formed and when it shoots off off its first 
big surge of DMT. The first big surge of DMT happens right at 49 days. DMT being? Dimethyltryptamine, which okay. is the same psychedelic basic substance as we find in mushrooms. And at 49 days is when the pineal gland is formed enough to shoot this off. Now, Dr. Rick Strassman and his research has, has come up with the hypothesis, which is very interesting, that this is the point when the spirit enters the body. At 